Hey everybody, uh, Shannon Forrest here at my home studio, uh, as you can see, with the guys from Innovative, and we're going to, uh, you know, give you some uh, insight into what my background is, and uh, you know what the, all this here is about, and uh, what's going on with me right now, uh, and some of the musical things I'm into, and uh, and so yeah, we'll get started, do some playing, and, and answer some questions. I am, uh, I'm from Easley, South Carolina. It's a small town outside of Greenville. And uh, my dad was in, uh, and still is in, in the music industry. He worked on a lot of uh, uh, traditional gospel, you know, uh, music. And he had a recording studio, you know, from the time I was a kid. So it was just kind of a natural progression. I, you know, I was very fortunate to walk into a situation where uh, there was an opportunity for me, I, you know, uh, but, in, you know, that being the case, you know, I still had to be able to play, you know, but uh, so I got started very, very early, very early. I was, you know, uh, again, fortunate to be in the studio hearing some other great musicians and just kind of by osmosis, you know, getting getting that going. And I started recording, you know, for uh, for my dad on certain projects. Uh, a lot of times when I was 11, I was working pretty consistently. You don't have to have anything as elaborate as this, you know, to be able to record and make music at home. For me, this this particular uh, version of that scenario was about uh, trying to find my way to making the music that I want to make. You know, I mean, it, it was just there was no dollar figure assigned to what I expected to make out of having it. It was just to have a place. I have a I had a band, and it's still kind of you know, hanging in the balance. Uh, that's just a rock band, you know, it was just uh, stuff that I was a part of the writing on and it was a three-piece band, you know, just, you know, a straight rock band. And this place was really built to facilitate that, you know, my music, you know. And, uh, but I also, I wanted to be able to make records that sounded like big time records and that's why this place is so big, you know, for the drum sound, you know, it's, it, I wanted to be able, there is a big difference, you know, between home recorded drums that are, limited by the space and then there's you know the thing the feedback I get from guys that, that send files to me is you know it feels like they recorded in ocean waves myself and, and a friend of mine that, that that's in that band with me that it was the two of us man uh, you know coming in uh, you know I come in after a day of sessions and you know throw on some gloves and pick up a hammer and just keep going it took a long time to get it to what you see here but now what it's done is, is my career uh, is much more centered out of working here. I think it's probably a realistic uh, part uh, of the future for everyone to be able to record from home. You know, you reach a point where you've done it. You've done it. This is how I play. This is how I hear music. There's only I can't play backwards, you know what I'm saying? So you have to look for other things to find avenues to uh, you know, to, to grow, you know, there's really, in the studio, you know, that's really not the place it happens. It's, it's about what you're doing outside of those sessions that, that keeps you growing as a player. You bring that into the studio, but you don't, everything moves at a certain pace in the studio. You don't have, you know, especially the day, these days, you don't have time to find the new ground there. I have been uh, fortunate to have a, a long relationship with Rich Mangiacaro, who at the time when I first met Rich was, uh, was with Peisty, and, and, and that was really my first real endorsement. Rich told me about what was going on with the company, that they were expanding from, from marching, uh, you know, uh, uh, sticks and, and, and products into drum set. Like a lot of things, you know, when you, when you get re very precise about something, especially the longer you do it, consistency becomes key, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, the longer you play the drums, you run into physical things, you run into muscle issues and joint issues and things, and, and it, uh, you know, it just puts a spotlight on, uh, on how important consistency is. You know, if you get a pair of sticks and it's half the way to the last one that you played, all of a sudden you're pushing different muscle groups differently and, you know, it's just an entirely different thing. And, and uh, 
you know, one of the things that Rich mentioned to me was that uh, the attention to detail, you know, uh, those kind of details, consistency w was, you know, at the top of the list. I use 8As, just, you know, standard kind of 8A. Uh, I got some sticks sent over uh, that were uh, weighted to the weight, very specific weight. I like my 8As to be closer to like a 5B weight, so it's a smaller, slightly smaller uh, diameter, you know, but the stick is, it's a heavy version of that stick. And, uh, and that was the trick for me before, was always getting that weight, because that's a big part of feel and sound, is that extra weight on those uh, smaller sticks. And uh, man, everything has been beautiful. I mean, the, the, you know, the every, everyone over there is, is just a, a joy to deal with, and, and every time I pick up the sticks, it is a known quantity. You know, it's, it's, there's no variable there. It's just been amazingly consistent. So, uh, you know, for me, that, that speaks to uh, work ethic and, and, and uh, just the direction uh, and the drive behind the people involved. So I, I can't speak highly enough about Innovative and, and the relationship there. So everybody, check them out.